Backstage at the Esplanade with Burton Cummings, a magnificent set. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. It was um, <clears throat> excuse me. We weren't we weren't really allowed to play that long tonight because Mark is coming on as well. We were only given about an hour, but it, it went by in two seconds, and the crowd was great, man. Beautiful venue, beautiful weather, great crowd. I love Boston. I was hoping for the cocktail version. We ain't seen nothing yet. Well, but but you need 20 horn players to do that properly, and we don't have that with us. Uh, when did you get the BMI award for the four million? Oh, it was actually about six or eight months ago. I think it's closer to five million airplays now. And um, and stand tall. My own single is over two million airplays now. There's there's been about three or four. They call them million airs, like million hyphen a i r s million times on the air. <laughs> and um, I have three or four of them now. And it's amazing because I say this on stage a lot. You know, when you're when you're a kid. 13, 14 years old, I weaseled my way into my first band. I never would have dreamed that I would have be part of a record that, you know, like These Eyes, an American Woman, and stuff that's been played millions and millions of times. You don't, you don't tend to think that far ahead when you're a kid, and I'm, I'm thrilled about it all, you know? That stuff is around forever now. Live at Massey Hall, Joe Vanelli. How does that all come about? Well, I've known Joe for years. Um, he's Gino Vanelli's brother, obviously, and we're, we were all Canadians together when Canada first started having hit records. And Joe engineered my last album, Above the Ground, and I love Blue Moon Studios because it's about 15 minutes from where I live in Los Angeles. So it, it, most of my life, I had to fly to another city and record and stay in a hotel at night. Nowadays, when I'm mixing or recording, I go to Joe's studio and I can sleep in my own house that night. So I like that very much. Joe's a tremendous engineer, a wonderful keyboard player, and uh, he's got a great ear for mixing. So we did, um, we did two different nights at Massey Hall, one in 2010 and one in 2011. And we culled the best performances from both nights. And it's, uh, the album is, is 19 tracks. In the days of vinyl, it would have been a double album. And I'm thrilled with it. it stuff like Hand Me Down World and No Sugar and Albert Flat, all of the songs that are so recognizable, they've never sounded better. Than, this is the same band that's on the live album, the band you saw today. And I think we, we really did justice to the songs. And that's what I was hoping for. You know, they're mostly my songs, and I sang them all. So, I would never want to put out a lame live album, and I'm very proud of it. Believe me, it's not lame at all. Yeah, you're mastering with... Um, Bernie. With, with Bernie Grunman, yeah. Bernie Grunman's place is interesting. When you, uh, when you walk in the front door, you're blinded by gold and platinum on the walls. It's like overwhelming when you go in there. It's, he did Thriller and Hotel California, like the biggest albums in history, you know, and I'm always thrilled because Joe and Bernie have a good relationship so it's it's great for me because I know automatically Bernie will be the master you know do the mastering so it's great for me I know you're busy Burton so just a couple of questions left these eyes you said it took 30 minutes to write mm -hmm. and what happened with the producer and you guys really promoted that well we didn't Randy and I you know it put it this way 1969 nobody really wanted a ballad everybody wanted to be Led Zeppelin in 1969 we wrote the song very quickly and it was I had some pieces Randy had some pieces and uh, we just put them together, you know, and it worked out fine. Then the record company went gaga over it and promoted the hell out of it, and it took off. So then they wanted another one. So we wrote Laughing, Made to Order, literally in about 20 minutes. They said, okay, you want another ballad? Let's write a ballad. And we wrote that. And I think what happened with our band initially, when No Time came out, we, that was the turning point. We started getting taken more seriously as a, as a real band from then on. You've made some of the greatest memories of our lives. We thank you very much for the great show tonight. Goodness, thank you very much. And hello, Boston. What a wonderful city. Just, I love being here, and it was great to us in the old days, and I hope to come back regularly. Thanks, everybody, for today. Could you say this is Burton Cummings on Visual Radio? Yeah. Hi, this is Burton Cummings on Visual Radio. Stay right here. Thanks so much, man. All right, thank you. Could we ask you to say something about when you and Mark Farmer played together? Oh, sure. I'm Hi, I'm Burton Cummings, and I am standing backstage at the Hatch Shell in Boston. Just finished my show, and uh, the legendary Mark Farner is about to take the stage. And as I said to the audience, what a novel idea. Two authentic lead singers on the stage, not in phony bands, but in the real singers that sang the real songs that they wrote and recorded 
on the same stage together in one night. This was a real treat for me. I think Mark is going to enjoy himself, and I sure know that Boston enjoyed the first part anyway. This was a great day. Two authentic singers on the same stage in one night. What an idea. And when did you back to back in the we played, we played together with Grand Funk in about 70, 71, 72, around that era, about two or three times together in the, in the old days, yeah, early 70s. Do you remember where you did it? Oh, it was in the south, Arkansas, Alabama. Um, I honestly, can't, after thousands of gigs, it's hard to remember. Um, but it was in the south, the southern states. We did about three, three shows together. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Thanks.